If you implement Zoho One wrong, it's better just not to have it. If you implement Zoho One wrong, you'll hate it so much that you'll just end up moving to another system, and then you'll repeat that cycle until you realize that the systems were never really the problem to begin with. People want to move their entire tech stack into Zoho to have everything integrated and automated, but then they go about Zoho implementation as if they hop in a car, put on a blindfold, and then slam the gas, and they're shocked when they crash. People literally have no idea what they are doing when implementing Zoho. In this video, I'm going to show you how to implement Zoho One correctly so you can save on software, integrate and automate your tech stack, report on everything and track everything correctly. I'm Drew Brockbank, a Zoho implementation specialist and partner. I've implemented Zoho over 100 times for 100 different organizations. And with that, let's get into it. Okay, so before you go about an implementation of Zoho, you have to know what you're building. And in order for you to know what you're building, someone's got to demonstrate the functionality of Zoho for you. So with that in mind, I'm gonna show you how Zoho is designed to be used from start to finish. Okay, we're gonna do a rapid fire demo here. So we're not gonna go super deep into any of these applications, but I'm gonna give you the main idea for the applications, the core applications that are involved in Zoho One. Okay, so here is the executive dashboard. Now, this is the goal. You want an executive dashboard because you wanna make data-driven decisions and you wanna be guided by your system's performance when you're developing Zoho. So in other words, when you look at a report like this, you don't wanna say, okay, how is the business doing? Okay, from left to right, we're noticing a drop off here and a drop off here. And then you decide, well, let's work somewhere over here. Unless there's other information outside of this report, that demands attention and development and improvement in this area of the business, you should be going at the drop-off points, right? The current constraint of the business because you have in business what's called the preferable problem principle, which is upstream in the process are your biggest problems. Or in other words, if you don't have leads coming into the business, you have bigger fish to fry. Okay, that's the first problem you gotta solve. Leads come into the business and you gotta solve this and that's a problem of marketing. And then you have this preferable problem right? Because the problem no one wants is lead generation. If you have too many leads, then you have a preferable problem, which is how do I manage the leads coming in the door? And how do I automate my lead scoring and my um, automated drip campaign so that I can get them over to sales? And then when you have too many sales, you have a problem in operations, the preferable problem. You have so much money coming in the door, so many clients, so many customers, that now the preferable problem is operationalizing the business so you can actually fulfill for all the clients and customers that are coming in the door so that you can deliver for them. All right, so that's the preferable problem principle. Now to actually put this into practice, you need a report like this, a dashboard like this, so that you can see where your current constraint of the organization is, and you can focus on it. You can double down on the issues that are pressing. So if you can solve problems upstream here, then you can solve downstream problems later because those are preferable. But you have to be able to visualize where the current constraint of the business is, and that's what this report does. Um, it also shows you attribution. So one question in an organization that's doing marketing or any kind of promotional activity, whether you're doing organic posts or you're running ads, especially if you're running ads, if you're spending money like that. Um, but even when you're spending your time, like for me, I, I run ads, but a lot of what I'm doing is content-based marketing. I want to know what kinds of content bring in leads to my organization. The way that I can do that is through this report. I can see not only the different lead sources, this isn't, my, this isn't my actual report, by the way, this is a demonstration executive dashboard, but I have my own version of this and I can even see what kinds of content are bringing in leads to my organization and think about how powerful that is for a moment. If you can see what types of content or what type of ads or keywords from Google ads are actually driving revenue, because in this report, look, you can actually look at what's giving you closed one revenue for the organization by attribution or lead source. And you can switch this out for any UTM parameter. We're gonna go into that in just a moment. If you can successfully tie revenue to its marketing activity or source or content or term or whatever it might be, you can always double down on what's working. Now this solves a major problem in marketing because in marketing, people 99% of the time have no idea what's actually driving revenue into the organization or driving closed one deals. 
So if you're able to identify what's driving revenue, you can keep doubling down and zeroing in on the 80-20 rule. What's the 20% of activities that you're doing that's bringing in 80% of the revenue? The more you double down on that, the more revenue your organization can make. And the reason that marketing is expensive is because they're spending time, effort, and money on things that aren't working. So this solves that problem. Okay, that's the executive dashboard. Let's talk about how you actually create this. So it all starts from the website, right? Most of you are going to get going to get your leads from the website, but you also may, on top of this, right? This is more inbound. You might do some outbound. Okay, I'm just going to show you the form for now. So I have a form on my website. It's called registration of interest. Um, this is the same as a contact us form. It's just my fancy term for it. And uh, essentially, I'm like, I'm not really ready to work with you quite yet. I want to assess you. And then I can determine if we're a good fit. Are you already on Zoho? You fill this out. Okay. So here's the form. You fill it out. This is actually a Zoho form. It doesn't look like a Zoho form, but Zoho form now has two types of forms. One form is the card format, which is what you're seeing now. Just one question at a time. I actually love this format. And then another is all the fields at the same time, which, which is, it doesn't look as good. And Zoho forms, you can pretty it up and make it look okay. But I like the card format. So this is a Zoho form. The nice thing from here is I'm also tracking everyone's activity. You can try to apply this code to your site that it messes up my tracking, but I have only this URL will work for my code. So be aware. Okay, so once I add this sales IQ uh, snippet to my website, I can enable a chatbot if I want. So two things with sales IQ, you've got chatbot, and there's a rabbit hole I can go on chatbot because you've got Zobot. Um, you can even tie a chatbot into your knowledge base. But you've got chatbot and you've got visitor tracking. I just use the visitor tracking, but you can use both if you want to. And then from here, since I get visitor tracking, which I'll show you in a moment, I can port it over to my CRM. Now, here's the Zoho form. I built this in Zoho forms. The nice thing about this is if I go over to share, and then I go over to track entries, I can track all the UTM parameters. So again, the way that I get this report to work with these different attribution sources. And then attribution quickly. Attribution just means what's working. Attribution is what did we do and what did it do for us? What we did, a YouTube video. What I did, a YouTube video. What did it do for us? How much traffic did it bring in? How much, um, how many leads did it bring in? How many deals did it bring in? How many closed one deals came from this source? So you get the idea there. The way that you're able to accomplish that is by bringing in UTM parameters from the form. Or in other words, if I'm here on the form and there are UTM parameters at the end of this, right? If I do UTM source equals linked in. Oh, and you can't, yeah, and you can see it right here. So if I were to add UTM parameters to the top here, that would then be captured by this form because I have this website tracking code, okay? And so this advanced website tracking code grabs that along with the GCLID. For those of you who are doing Google ads, you are going to want to capture the GCLID because then you can populate a load of other information that's gonna be really helpful for you in reporting. I digress. Okay, so moving forward, here's my lead flow. A new lead comes in. I also validate that lead using zero bounds because I don't want to muddy up my leads module with a bunch of crap leads that don't even have a valid domain. So I validate lead emails on creation and then I just mark them as junk if they are invalid and then I bring them over to MQL, which means marketing qualified lead, or um, for some leads I just mark as marketing ready leads, not sales ready leads. We're gonna go into that right now. So here's my process for my organization. And if you don't have your process properly documented and then customized in the system, you can't get this dreamy report that we want, this dreamy executive dashboard. You can't have this unless you have this. Okay, it's just not possible. And the way that you get this, and I highly recommend you do it this way, is you go to a document. You can make a copy of this document in the link in the description below. And essentially what this document does is it gives you a safe place to design your processes before you customize the system. Don't have TikTok brain, don't be impatient and jump into the system and customize everything and then break it. Again, like I said at the very beginning of this video, so many people 
they jump into the car, they put on a blindfold, they slam the gas, and they're like, I want to get to a perfect Zoho implementation. Then they crash and they wonder why they crashed. Then they go to another system, they do it over and over and over again. And then they never think to themselves, maybe it's the way that I'm doing this that's wrong. It is almost always the way that you're doing something um, that leads to the failure. Sometimes there's other uncontrollable factors that affect it. But for the most part, if you're doing things correctly, if you do things in the right stages, you're going to have a successful Zoho One implementation. There is a strategy and I'm going to show it to you right now. So here's the strategy. Document before you customize. Because documenting here is far easier to do than customizing the system and you need to get buy-in. So if you're a solopreneur, I would still do this as an exercise. But if you have multiple stakeholders that have to agree on how the CRM is going to be designed and built and you have to propose things as you go, this is the perfect way to do it. And you write it as a narrative. So you can see I put here definition, you could put narrative, but you want to write out your process from left to right. That just seems logical, right? That's how our brains work. That's how we read stories. And it might seem a bit corporate-y and woo-woo to write it as a narrative and say, here's the raw lead, here's the marketing lead, here's sales ready, this is what it means. But this is really helpful for end users and for people that are trying to analyze and get insights from reports like this. It's nice for them to all have a place that they can go to say, what does negotiation even mean? Does this mean the proposal has been sent already? Um, is this in the right order? There's going to be a lot of questions when looking at a report like this. So you even the playing field for everybody when you have a journey map that you've created from left to right. So make sure that you do that. Okay, so real quickly, I'm going to fly through these. Raw lead, that just means if you've... Um, brought in leads from other sources and you are not sure if you want to market to them yet, here's a holding place for them. So for example, a lot of people that I work with, they use Zoom Info, Data Axle to bring in leads. They're not ready to, they haven't scrubbed them yet. They haven't validated them yet. Once they do that and they make sure their ideal customer profile, whatever they need to do to make them marketing ready. And you may be thinking to yourself, oh, this is just if someone has a big team. As a solopreneur, you should do this. Um, if you have a team of 10 people and you Manage an organization that has 500 people, you still need to do this. The process is the same. If you have a raw lead that comes in the organization, you need to validate the email address. If you're sending SMS, the phone number. That way, you can move someone over to the next status, which is lead marketing ready. Marketing ready means you can send out automated communications. Then, once they have a proper lead score, which you can see here, I have Zoho lead scoring. Once they are scored properly and they breach 100 points, then they go over to marketing qualified lead, or in other words, they are sales ready. A sales person on your team can now justify the manual contact of that lead. Okay. A lead just represents an unqualified opportunity to do business with somebody or to engage with somebody. Then you have working, which means sales has now engaged. And again, what I'm showing you, I, I keep uh, not backtracking. I want to give you context to this so that you're not getting lost along the way. Working means a salesperson has signaled to you as an administrator, or maybe you are the end user and that's okay too. It's signaling that, hey, I'm working on this, right? This is a sitting queue. MQL just means, hey, it's here. Working means, hey, I'm working on it. I'm actually making outreach attempts. Then reached means we've had one plus conversations. You can consolidate these three stages into one if you want. This is just the uh, baseline stages that you start with, statuses that you start with, and then you can adjust them as you go. Then you've got recycled. That means at some point, they were unqualified and they just weren't ready to commit, but you still want to market to them. They could be an opportunity in the future. Rejected just means it's not a real lead. Rejected to go back to my Zoho flow. If they have an invalid email address, they just get marked as rejected. So, okay, qualified means that they are pipeline ready. Needs analysis means you're in, by the way, everything before this line, this is like the first meeting, right? The first meeting, you should qualify them. You should. That might not be your process, but generally on that first meeting, the whole idea is that you qualify them to see if they're pipeline ready. Once that first meeting happens, you either mark them as recycled or you mark them as qualified. And then you have needs analysis. By the way, the report that I showed you earlier, it will work no matter how you use this process. So for example, someone doesn't have to hop through each of these hoops in a linear way. So they can start as an MQL and then they can go to reached and then they can go to needs analysis, and then they can go to closed one. They can hop steps, and that's okay. The report backfills all the stages. That's the tricky thing to do, but the report like I was showing you here is backfilling all the steps and stages so that you have this linear flow that flows gradually, hopefully, downward. Okay, 
So that's the idea from here is that you mark them qualified, second meeting is a needs analysis, then you send out a quote um, or a proposal, and then you have a negotiation, which is everything after you send out the proposal, then you can send out the contract proposal. I'm just, I get a little more detail here with like what apps you're gonna use. This is, gonna, this is a quote in CRM, this is a whole sign, and you use a whole books. Uh, the proper way to do that is create a sales order from a quote and then create the invoice and the purchase order. It just keeps your stock counts accurate and your bookkeeping correct. Then you've got close one, close lost. You understand what that means. And then you can do some contact statuses. And if you're doing account-based marketing, I'm gonna run through this. Account-based marketing is essentially outbound. If you're targeting a list of accounts that you wanna land, if you're going after logos, you can certainly use Zoho to do this. You'll just use the accounts module. The reason you'll use the accounts module as opposed to the leads is in the accounts module, you need to be able, you have to be able, well, when you're doing account-based marketing, you have to be able to keep track of all the contacts that are involved in the prospecting process. The prospecting process being when you're making outreach attempts to connect with a potential organization or person. In account-based marketing, it's a land and expand mentality where you have an organization, a Fortune 500 company, a Fortune 1000 company that you're going after, you have one or two contacts from that organization you go to them and you say, hey, I know you're probably not the right person to talk to, but who is the right person to talk to? Then you add another contact, then another contact. The problem is you can't do this process in the leads module. You can't do this process in the leads module because the lead is an orphan. Okay, the lead doesn't connect to a deal or an account or a contact. It's its own lone wolf. It's just sitting there. And why? Well, it's a screening. Uh, it's your screening process. The leads module is a filtration system for the rest of your system. It keeps everything to the right of here clean. And the way that they, the way you accomplish that technically is you have it as an orphan module instead of connected to the rest of your systems. A lead converted, by the way, becomes potentially a deal, a contact, an account. Okay, so with account-based marketing, uh, to finish this flow, you target, which means you have your list of accounts that you know would be your ideal customer, and you have working, which means you're making outreach attempts, uh, selling, you have an associated deal, which means they've now been qualified. They're in the pipeline. Win back an account that has a deal. It's been marked closed lost. And you have customer, any account that has a closed one deal associated. And then you have cold an account that needs further automated nurturing. All right. So from here, you can see I have my system. My Kanban view reflects my actual processes. That way I can manage my system in relation to my processes. Quick quote here. From Michael E. Gerber. You've probably read Emith. Organize around business functions, not people. Build systems within each business function. Let systems run the business and people run the systems. People come and go, but the system remains constant. Okay, the system remains constant. You want to build a system to last. This is how you do it. Okay, so as far as Zoho One goes, if you get Zoho CRM wrong, you can't get Zoho One right because Zoho CRM is the flagship product. It sits at the heart of everything that Zoho One is about. So in order to correctly set up Zoho One, you have to set up these integrations. You may think to yourself, oh, this is kind of confusing. I don't really know how to go about this. And if it's called Zoho One, then why on earth do I have to integrate everything? And that's where Zoho One is somewhat of a misnomer or it's not labeled or named correctly in that just because it's Zoho One, it's not one database, okay? it's uh, each application has its own individual database and you have to integrate those together because some people don't use all 50 applications. They only use 10. Some people buy Zoho CRM separately from Zoho One as a standalone product. So each application has to be able to stand on its own two feet. So Zoho One unfortunately doesn't combine all of the databases. So you still have to set up integrations between the databases so that the applications talk to each other. What's fortunate though, is you don't have to build them from scratch, is you have these integrations out of the box in the integration section in the Zoho Marketplace, and you can just go here, and then you can set up the integrations between various applications. So that is one of the major critical steps to successfully implementing Zoho, is making sure that the integrations are properly set up. Okay, then you've got campaigns. All right, so let's, let's backtrack a bit. Let's say you are in the leads module, and you're right here. Okay, so you're marketing ready, you need to be sent emails to warm you up and then to have lead scoring. Okay, one of the things that you would do is you'd create an email like this. Okay, so you can laugh, this is my email that I send out to my newsletter list. And I focus more on content such as YouTube, LinkedIn, but I also dabble in doing some email marketing, okay? 
been pretty consistent about it. So when I send out emails, the nice thing is when you do email marketing, a problem that commonly occurs is the customer. Or in other words, let's say you used MailChimp and Zoho together. Well, you're going to import your contacts over to MailChimp and then you just have first name, last name, email. That is not helpful. Are you going to send the same communications to a lead as you are to a customer? Probably not. But how would you know the difference if you only have the first name, last name, and email? You won't know the difference. So the way that you solve for the problem of the customer is you bring in other data points along with the contact so that you can further segment your audience. Segmentation allows you to avoid the customer. The customer is actually a really big issue in that it does it essentially doesn't allow the marketer any sort of confidence when sending out communications. And it just leads to higher opt-outs from your email list and a plethora of other issues. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you bring in as much data as possible. And the nice thing about Zoho campaigns and Zoho CRM is you can bring over as much data as you want from the contact, from the account, and from you can you can also bring it in from the deal, which is interesting because there can be multiple deals associated to a contact. But that gives you so much data to build segments off of. So that's why you want to use Zoho campaigns. Segmentation, and then you can build out these beautiful emails and send them out to your list. Okay, so next thing that we're gonna go over here is projects. So let's say you have finished, you, you've closed one a deal, you're gonna wanna start a project. Fortunately for you, Zoho Projects exists. It allows you to manage the work. And so we're going in order of revenue operations here, right? So you've got on the leftmost part or uh, upstream most part of the process for revenue operations is marketing. Marketing leads into sales. Sales leads into customer success or support. And you can also call that fulfillment or delivery. So the idea is that you use Zoho Projects as your work management here is a project that's sort of a demo, sort of active. Um, I work with uh, this team to, to get their e-commerce company set up. Okay, so the idea here is that you can use Zoho Projects to manage all of your tasks. You have a nice dashboard here that you can manage everything at a high level. And then you can go into reporting documents, milestones. There's so much to go into with Zoho Projects. I'll have to do a dedicated video in the future. But the idea here is that you can um, you can build out projects here and manage them. You might be freaking out like, hey, why is he showing a client thing? Um, I have part ownership in this organization. So for me, it's not a big deal. And my team members really don't care. Okay, so the from there, once you close a deal, when you close a deal, that's just because you've been able to get someone to sign a document, okay? And, and they sign the contract, they ink the contract. That's close one. That doesn't mean you've received revenue, typically. So after you close the deal, you still want to send out the invoice and you need to create a sales order so that you have the invoice and you have the purchase order that can go out from the sales order. And you can send multiple invoices if you're doing a payment plan. But when you use Zoho Books, you can essentially replace any of your bookkeeping software which is really, really helpful. Then you have Zoho Desk. So once you close one, once you close a deal, if you offer any kind of support package, you want to be able to manage the tickets that come in. So you'll give them a support address and say support at yourdomain.com. And then they'll go into, someone will email you and you'll want to make sure that you can handle all the tickets that are coming your way. So then you have Zoho Desk here that you want to implement and that you integrate with the integration section I was showing you earlier so that the tickets come in and they associate to their CRM record. Okay, so I'm going to go over some honorable mentions with you because these apps I think are interesting. There's just a couple of them, but um, they will they help you give uh, get a better idea of what it looks like to implement Zoho successfully. And so I think they are worth going over. So the first one that you can see here is Zoho WorkDrive. So uh, Zoho WorkDrive is inside of Zoho One, and WorkDrive just allows you to replace any cloud storage. Uh, application that you are currently using. So if you're using uh, Microsoft and you want to move over, cool, you can use WorkDrive instead of OneDrive. If you are using uh, Google Drive, you can move over to WorkDrive. And it gives you a ton of storage there and it integrates nicely with Zoho CRM. And you've got Mail. So I don't use this, but you can. I'm just the productivity suite in Zoho Workplace. So Zoho has Zoho Workplace. It's one of their suites or applications. It's like Zoho Mail, Zoho Sheets, Zoho Docs. And if you're all in for Zoho, that's awesome. Um, you can use Zoho Mail as well. Um, another honorable mention here is Zoho Sign. So Zoho Sign is really great in that you can take a document 
um, from Zoho CRM, turn it into a document for signature, send it out for signature, get the uh, certificate that it's been signed, and then you can make uh, contracts and send them out for signature through Zoho Sign, which is really helpful. Then you've got Zoho Vault. I highly recommend you use Zoho Vault to keep track of your passwords. You don't wanna be that person that has all of your passwords on a sticky note or a spreadsheet. That is not a secure way to do things and it's very risky. So make sure you use Zoho Vault. Essentially allows you a place to keep track of all of your passwords. This is all in the Zoho One subscription. By the way, you're already paying for it. Why not use it? I would mention Zoho Bookings, but Zoho Bookings isn't up to snuff. I'll give everyone an update when it's ready to go because I'd love to use Zoho Bookings versus Calendly. Just can't right now because they allow double bookings. And then you have Zoho inventory, this honorable mention, it's essentially an extension of Zoho books and that allows you to keep track of inventory if you are selling physical products and goods. So that is a Zoho One demonstration to give you an idea of what Zoho One is capable of so that when you go about implementing Zoho One, you know what system that you're trying to build. So this is going to be a lot less tactical and a lot more theoretical, but I think it's really important to understand this process or you're not going to be able to, you're not gonna have a good time in Zoho if you don't do this right. And this is the integration piece. So the integration piece is, hey, we know now that Zoho One isn't really Zoho One, it's Zoho 50 Plus, because Zoho One makes you think it's one database, all the applications are integrated. Zoho 50 Plus helps you understand you're paying one subscription for 50 plus applications that are completely separate from each other and now you have to integrate them, okay? So what you're going to do is identify what applications are actually worth integrating in your business. And so I've done some of the heavy lifting and thinking about this for you and that these are the core applications that are worth considering. There's some honorable mentions in the last section of the video, but you need to understand this, okay? Zoho Forms, Sales IQ, Flow, CRM, Campaigns, Desk, Projects, Inventory, Books, Work Drive, Analytics. That's why most people come over to Zoho, okay? There's some applications not listed here that you may be thinking, no, oh, Zoho Bookings, uh, Zoho this, Zoho that. They're not all listed here. These are core applications, right? This is a really solid version one implementation of Zoho that you want to aim for, okay? And the issue is if you just import your data in your initial implementation to Zoho CRM, but you don't have campaigns integrated, desk, projects, forms, uh, more campaigns, desk, less projects, analytics, sales IQ, uh, you're not gonna have a fun time integrating these later. And so the nice thing, and this is the strategic point that I wanna get across in this video, is if you integrate all the applications early on in the initial implementation before you even get people into the system, you already have people in the system, oh, I feel bad for you. It's just gonna be way harder and you'll need help, but you can still do it. It's just, it just is so much harder to do this if you don't do it at the beginning. Because if you do it at the beginning, if all these applications are integrated correctly, you only put your data into one app and it will automatically go to the other apps for you. And so it makes way more sense to do this when you initially implement and when you're initially developing Zoho so that you can implement it. Implementing just mean, hey, now everyone in your organization is using it. It's just better to do that at the beginning. So here are the Zoho applications that are worth integrating. Forms over to Zoho CRM. You use Google Sheets to design UTM parameters. Um, what I'm really getting at here is the journey map template that you can download. Zoho Sales IQ, it's nice to integrate that with Zoho CRM. That way you can see all of the visitor information from the CRM record, which you can certainly do. And then Zoho Flow, you wanna make sure that's integrated if you wanna do some data cleanup or automation. You want to have that set up before you implement Zoho along with Zoho Campaigns. You wanna make sure that's integrated. Zoho Desk, Zoho Projects, Zoho Work Drive, Zoho Analytics, so you're getting reporting. You wanna make sure all of this is set up so that as soon as you bring data into Zoho CRM, it's to the heart of the tech stack, will go into CRM and it will automatically disperse the data into applications instead of doing it in a staggered approach where you say, well, I don't know if I wanna use Zoho Desk yet. Just set it up, set up the integration so that when you are ready to move over to Zoho Desk, if you do, the data will just pour it on over there instead of you having to set up the integration, you forget about it, you import the records and you realize you could have synced the records and it becomes a whole thing. So take the initial time to go through these applications that you're seeing on this map that I created for you and go do the integrations for each and every one of them. Maybe thinking to yourself, well, Drew, it'd be really nice if you showed us how to do it. All you have to do is you need to go over to Zoho CRM. You need to go over to settings and you can do 90% of these. If you just go into the marketplace, go into Zoho right here and then set them up. Okay. So go set up the integrations for those different applications that I showed you in this integration section. It's just marketplace Zoho. 
and then you are going to be ready to go. You'll have this system as a V1, if you can just get those integrations done first, and then we'll go over the other parts of Zoho One implementation in this video. One huge part of an implementation is doing a migration of your data from your legacy system or from a bunch of spreadsheets into Zoho. And you have to understand the strategy of implementing Zoho in order to do it correctly. And so if you get the journey map, I've included a launch plan here where you can see from left to right in an ideal month what it would look like to actually implement Zoho. Now, the reason that I show you this is planning is indispensable, but plans are useless. I think it was Eisenhower that said something to that effect. You can go look it up. But that I, I'm a big believer in that every hour you use in planning, you're saving hours in execution. It makes so much sense to do planning, not because it's going to go according to your plan, but because it provides much needed clarity and clarity precedes execution. So you have to have some level of clarity in order to go fast and do things correctly. If you want to go fast and do things correctly, you need clarity. So this is your way to get clarity. Feel my implementation plan. That's why I created it is for you. So you didn't have to develop it from scratch. Okay, so that's the idea behind the launch plan. Okay, implementation strategy, I already have this for you too. It's a card, it just says, you know, it's question guided. So it says, hey, do you know how to design views? Demonstration, no, documentation, customization, you can check this out too. But the idea that I wanna get across is you need a launch plan. Okay, this is what I would call documentation, right? Documentation or planning in order to provide clarity. You got journey map. We talked about this a little bit in the demonstration section of the video if you watched it. If you didn't, that's okay, we're gonna go over it right now. Oops, now you can see, now you can see, oh my gosh. if I do not, if I, if I uh, don't scroll right here, it like shows all my text. Now you can see my text between my mom and my girlfriend. That's okay. You can go pause that certain frame and go check it out. Okay. Um, I have no idea what they said to me. You can tell me what they said to me. Okay. I digress. In this document, you want to be preemptive. You want to make sure these statuses and these stages actually reflect your organization's process. I am a white belt in your organization's processes, but I'm a black belt in Zoho, and ChatGPT can make me maybe a brown belt in your processes by saying, this is what their organization does. Here's an excerpt from their homepage. Tell me what their best 14 stages and statuses should be, and then ChatGPT can give me something. But still, you want to do two things here. You want to list your stages, and you want to make sure, number two, you don't list your steps, okay? So stages and steps are different. Stages or statuses, I'm, I'm using those interchangeably, are essentially the significant milestones along the journey of someone's customer journey. That's why this is called journey map. What you don't want to do is list every individual step that happens in the process. That is detailed level documentation. This is high level documentation. High level documentation precedes detailed documentation. Because if you start to create detailed documentation on things that don't make sense from a strategic point of view and strategy is typically high level, then you're going to spend a lot of waste. You're going to waste a lot of time doing things that really didn't matter to begin with. Okay. So first imagine you're, you're drawing something, right? You're going to do the outline first, and then you're going to color it all in with detail. Okay. So this is the outline. What you're doing here is the outline for the Zoho implementation, and it gives you a safe space to mess with things and mess up. So that when you do get approval, you're in the best possible situation to move on to customization. And customization is this. Customization is, here, I'm not even showing my screen. Customization is this, okay? Customization is configuring your Kanban view to reflect the different statuses and stages here. Raw lead, lead, MQL. Raw lead, lead, MQL. Okay, so it works from left to right. And essentially what I've done here is I've just added a divider to show you that this is the leads module, this is the deals module, but they work from left to right. And if you combine them, you essentially have your customer journey right in front of you. Deals representing the qualified part of your pipeline, deals representing the unqualified part of your pipeline. That is for a B2B typical sales process. You don't always have to use leads. Um, you most certainly use deals if you're B2B. Your e-commerce, it works completely differently. We're not going to go into e-com right now because most of my clients so do e-commerce, but you can still use Zoho for e-commerce and it works really well. Alrighty. So after documentation, you have customization. So documenting first is going to make this so smooth. It's going to make things happen so much quicker. So you want to do that. And then from there, after you have documentation, customization down, you can get your executive dashboard. Okay. If you try to build it, in any other order, you are going to be disappointed. 
you may think to yourself, I'm going to skip journey and I'm just not going to tell Drew. Do the journey map. If you skip this step, you will regret it. I promise you, even if you're a solopreneur and you're like, there's no one else to train, go ahead and, and just challenge yourself. Can you make, can you document your process logically from left to right? And if you can't, if you can't even write your process logically from left to right in the narrative, how on earth are you going to use a system that is as complex as Zoho? You're just not going to be able to do it. If you can't write it out, you can't use the system. Okay, so write it out so other people can take advantage of it too. If your team grows, it most certainly will. If you're offering something that's valuable to the marketplace, then you've got customization. And then you can build this dreamy dashboard that shows you each of the statuses or stages in your pipeline. And then it shows you how many opportunities have progressed through that certain stage in any certain period of time, the conversion rate between that and the last stage, and then how much revenue has progressed through the different stages and where you had drop off. Okay, so then you can see, um, all right, here we've got our closed one deals. And then this is kind of cool. This is called Sparkline, but it essentially shows you, hey, based on the data contained here, when did you see the drop off, right? Did it just fall flat at a certain stage? It's kind of useless, but I just thought it was interesting that I'd include it in this report. But the main idea here is that you want to be able to say, hey, we did email marketing and we had zero close one deals. Why are we spending so much time and money on email marketing when it's bringing in essentially nothing? One thing to note here is this executive dashboard is built on a last touch attribution model. I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole too much, even though when I usually say that I do go down the rabbit hole. But the idea that I want to get across here is you have different attribution models you can use. You can use a W model, you can use a U model, you can use a first touch, you can use the last touch. The best one to use initially is the last touch, meaning the last thing you can measure when you had a touch point with a lead or prospect is where you're going to give all the credit to, 100% of the credit to initially. Then when you get more advanced with your tracking and you track more touch points, then you can get a little crazy. Don't do it right now. Don't worry about it right now. It's just not worth postponing an implementation an implementation of Zoho because you don't have your W model correct, right? Or you're not doing a 30-30-40 a split of attribution. It just doesn't make any sense to, to focus on that. So make sure that you build this dashboard um, after you have documented everything correctly in a journey map, and then you've customized your system. And you really want to get the customization part right. There's so much I could go into, like what, what makes a stage qualified as a stage instead of a step and as a general practice i should note four to seven stages or statuses comprise a good pipeline or visualization of a process anything more than that gets a little too complex to manage and then every anything before that doesn't give you enough insight to make reporting useful so four to seven is like a sweet spot okay and so once you do this you are in a really good position right you have your integration done your system's customized now you can actually bring your data in or you can plug in Zoho form. So as people fill in the forms, it is coming to your system proactively. Then if you have other data that you're wanting to bring in, you are ready for the migration. This is where I get really, really lazy with doing these videos because the migration piece is so technical and complex. And you may be super technical and you're like, data normalization isn't complex. For me, it is very tiring to demonstrate. So I have two options for you. One, I have taken a part of Z training, which is my free power user training, it's essentially my lead magnet. Um, you can throw in your email address here and you can get a uh, instant access to power user training, which will teach you how to do a migration. Also, I have taken sections from that video and just clipped it or, or thrown it into this video as a host here implementation masterclass. Okay. Um, you can't see it here, but one of these cards is migration. This one's migration. And so I, I don't know how much longer Z training is going to be available. I've thought of redoing it. And I also just feel like I'm giving way too much away for free, but I also have the preferable problem of way too many leads. So I don't know. But the thing I'm trying to get across here is if you want to know tactically how to do a migration, then go and do, uh, go and watch these videos. Because if you've done the integration piece that I described earlier in this video, and then you migrate your data, the implementation process is so much smoother instead of doing the migration first and then setting up integration individually and then messing it all up. Okay. So make sure that integration is already set up. The form is already plugged in so that you can just migrate your data and then you can go. So one other thing that's important to note here, when you do a migration, you need to understand the strategy behind a migration. If you have a large organization that you're doing this for, or if you just have a small team and you're not wanting to disrupt your operations, you'll want this strategy. Okay, so it's part of the launch plan. 
and we didn't go in depth on it. I just glossed over. So now I'm going to go, I'm going to highlight to you the parts that matter for our migration. So let's say that you have an ideal month that next April, I'm in May now, at the time of making this video is May. Uh, but let's say it's April, okay? You will initially get your demonstration April 1st. Then April 2nd, you'll document, customize, you'll do some light testing in the system. Then you will do your data export from a legacy system. Let's say you are using ACT, okay? ACT is your software. Um, that's actually, it's just like an ancient, or gold mine. Okay, that's an ancient uh, CRM platform that you may be aware of. And I migrated from gold mine in the past. You'll export your data from gold mine. And then the next day, you'll do a sample migration. And the sample migration is essentially your way of getting a little bit of data and not all of your data into the system so that you can conduct user testing. Okay, this mitigates risk. Don't do a full implementation for your first implementation unless you're a solopreneur and you know that you want to move into Zoho and it's not going to be a big deal. Okay, if you have tons of people on your team and in your organization, you have a large amount of users for Zoho you're going to want to do some user acceptance testing before on a bit of sample data. That's why you do a sample migration. And then when you do a migration, think minimum viable. Do not think everything everywhere all at once for my data. No, just get the data that makes sense to start out. Usually you need some of your leads. You don't even need all of the data points. Like when I talk data points, it's like imagine your export as a spreadsheet, which it is, right? your columns of data points and your rows as records. You don't need all the rows. You don't need all the columns. You need the columns that make sense in order for user acceptance testing. And you need the rows that make sense, maybe just 20 records. And then when you get in, you can, you can migrate effectively over to leads, deals, contacts, accounts, but you really don't need everything. You might want to bring in products as well. That would make sense so that people can do quotes. And then you have on Friday, add users to Zoho, get team training. Okay, we're going to talk about training in a minute. But the idea is that they have some level of training before they do user acceptance testing. So they'll get their training in, they'll do a couple of days of training. You can use Z training again. If you just go here, it's um, this is a five day strategy for uh, training your team to be power users. So you can even go here and add your whole team. So during this step, you can say to yourself, OK, I'm going to do team training now. They're going to do it for five days. I'll add my team to training right here. They'll all get an email and they can join. OK, then you've got testing. So you're gonna do a day of testing. You're gonna say, hey, this is our process. And you, when you train, I should say this, you have two parts of training. You may think to yourself, well, Drew, how are you gonna train me? I can't train you on your processes, but I can train you on Zoho. That way you can put your processes into Zoho instead of hiring me to do so and it being really painful, um, which I can help people through that. But the idea is that you should be as self-sufficient as you can. You don't wanna always be leaning on a Zoho implementation or consulting specialist. However, you should get good advice before you implement a system, okay? There's some room in there for you to interpret what you need to do. So the idea is when you do a implementation, um, you want a testing phase and you want them to be trained so that when they're testing, they're both trained on one of two, they're trained on two things. Your processes, which you need to teach them, which comes from, again, the journey map here. They need to be trained on these processes. And then, here, let me do this. Boom. They're trained on these processes. And then also, they are trained on how the system is designed to be used, which is this Z training. Okay. They need to be trained on both. Once they have that training for a week, you can do testing for however long you want. I left a couple of days here if you guys wanted to say, hey, we're going to do four days of training. And you don't have to do all of your users, by the way, for user acceptance testing. You just want to test maybe a couple of users that you feel confident will really understand this, the system. And then if you're like, okay, we did the free trial, we brought in our data added a user to do user acceptance testing. Now I know I want Zoho. Now I'm willing to put down the, the yearly payment for Zoho. Then you can go forward with full data export, full migration. Okay. And it's also really good to do the data export before, because if the first time you're doing a data export migration is when you're ready to launch the weekend before your launch, you're in trouble. Okay. That's the nice thing about this too, is it shows the best time to do your full migration is the weekend the friday evening before the monday that you launch that way you have the least amount of possible opportunity for delta records to occur or delta records to be modified and created in the time before a launch okay so that's the idea is that you would do it a friday before 
You could also do, I mean, you might think to yourself, well, our least busy time is a Monday. And so we'd want to do a Monday so we could do it before Tuesday. You can do that too. That doesn't matter. The idea here is that you do the full data export and migration during the least busy time possible so that you don't have to do a delta migration. So if you do this right, you don't have to do a third migration and export, which would be your delta. So that is the strategy behind the migration. If you want to know the tactical Git Z training, there's videos explaining exactly how to do it or go to my Zoho CRM implementation video and take that. And I will also show you in those videos how to go over the migration tactically so that you can actually accomplish that. Training is a very tricky part of a Zoho implementation. And I would say that it is the most important part of your implementation, because if you fail to train your team and do everything else right, it doesn't matter at all because the system will not be used properly. The reports will not be accurate. And people just won't use the system. And why build a system that people aren't going to use and you can't get reports off and make better decisions to improve the business? There's no reason to do it. And so you've got to get your training right because you don't rise to the capabilities of Zoho. You fall to the level of your training. Hence my super dramatic landing page here. You fall to the level of your training. Okay. So here is Z training. If you get Z, tra Z training, this is the portal. Here's my beautiful box and my old profile picture that you should look at. So the idea here in this video is for me to get across the strategy and the strategy of Z training is pretty sound. Okay. So it asks you questions um, so that every single person on your team can get training that's actually relevant to their situation because I hate training that's irrelevant. Okay. If I'm getting going through training, I'm like, okay, I'm never going to use this. I'm sitting there, I zone out that I miss bits and pieces that I should have been paying attention to. And so I want to know what's actually relevant to my situation. The way that I've gone about developing a solution for that is with this question guided training. So do you know how Zoho CRM is designed to use? No, you need a demonstration. Have you documented your marketing and sales processes? No, then you need to document. Yes. If you already have done it, then you can skip to the next section and ask yourself this question. And so essentially you only get the training on the things that matter. It's pretty neat, right? Have you migrated your data? No, migrate. Okay. Here's data migration, how to get your data ready, blah, 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 blah. So you can just go through this. And another major element of the training is you've got two major buckets for people. You could argue there's three or four, but really you have administrators, which are people who configure and customize the system. Then you've got standard users who are the end users of your system, the power users who are actually day-to-day -day moving the cards from left to right across your Kanban board and doing marketing and sales. So you got end users and then you've got administrators. So your end users don't need to know of anything other than how it's supposed to be used. Your processes, they don't need to know how to customize Zoho. They don't need to know how to migrate Zoho. And so in the training I mentioned in one of these videos, I'm like, hey, if you just need basic training, skip to section 106. And here's where you can get all the basic training that's important as a standard user. So you can go through that and it will essentially divvy up the training for you. I want you to know the strategy behind the training so that you can understand why the training is valuable. All of this is free. Z training will be free forever. And part of me dies when I say that because I'm like, it just takes so much. I essentially condensed three years of using Zoho, administering Zoho and consulting in Zoho and implementing Zoho into a training program for free. So go ahead and check it out. Might as well. And that is the strategy. Number one, to give the correct training to the correct people in your organization with one training program. And then also to show you how to implement Zoho. That way you don't have to rely on someone who doesn't have a comprehensive strategy for implementing Zoho. So that's the training element. Go ahead and take Z training. It's free and it should get you set up to implement Zoho correctly. You may have asked yourself, well, Drew, this all makes sense, but when am I going to put fields in the system? When am I going to do detailed level customization? Because right now, all I've got is this system for an end user. It looks like this it just doesn't make any sense. Like now they know the narrative behind it and they understand, you know, the story of the system and when to move the different leads and deals across the Kanban board. But how are they actually supposed to understand, you know, what, what fields are they going to put in? How do I know how to put in fields? And that leads us to detailed level development. So again, the strategy here is initially to draw an outline of the system. And then once you have a clear outline, you can start to color everything in and make it work. And coloring everything in includes detailed level development. Or in other words, 
do you have the fields and the functionality or automation or integration necessary in order to move a card to the next section? And this is continuous. You are never going to finish this process. You will always be doing detailed level development. You don't always have to do high level development because you can give yourself a really good strategy and make tweaks as you go. The detailed level development is always going to be occurring. I'm going to go over quickly the strategy for doing this. Okay, so the first part of the strategy for doing detailed level development is look at your process. So if you're in analytics, look at the current constraints of the business. If you have a 100% conversion rate between one status and the next, most likely that's not where detailed development needs to occur. But if you have a drop off here, okay, and you have a 42% conversion rate between negotiation and closed one, that is a good indicator that there is something here that you need to do detailed level development. Now, the reason that it's important to understand these things, you maybe think this is useless. This is really important because detailed development takes so much time and so much effort. There's so much sweat equity that goes into it. If you're hiring a consultant, you are paying so much money to do detailed level development. You don't want to do it on things that aren't impactful. Okay. And you can't blindly say, I just want to automate and integrate everything. That's not how Zoho works. You can't automate and integrate everything. Do you realize how much of a loaded objective that is to integrate everything, to automate everything that's happening in your business? It's never going to happen. So now you're left with a choice. And this is where strategy comes in. You have unlimited choices in Zoho of what you can do. There's literally millions of things you can do in Zoho between all the features, all the different applications. There's so much you can do. And you have finite or very limited amount of time in your day and money you can spend for someone else to actually develop the system. And so now you have to make a choice. What is worth developing in the system? You've done the high level stuff. Awesome. It's time to color things in. It's time to prioritize. You can only do one thing at a time unless you have unlimited you know, people resources, which you don't. And unless you have a limited amount of money, which you don't. And you still have to do one thing at a time even then. So the question is, how do we prioritize? So the first lever you pull or aspect to understand so that you can do the most impactful thing for detailed level development is look here and say, okay, we have a drop off between these two stages between lead marketing ready and MQL. What are things that we can do? Well, between these two stages to improve the conversion rate and to do detailed level development, you can include fields here that are needed in order to capture better information for marketing. You can better segment your leads. You can add lead scoring. You can add an automation for lead assignment. There's so much you can do. Okay. So there's, I just presented a bunch of options for you, a bunch of solutions, things that you can try. And then even with those recommended, recommended solutions, you can narrow in on the one that makes sense and start with that order list and go. Okay. And then the next thing you may want to do is between needs analysis and proposal and say, there's a drop off here. What are we going to do between needs analysis and proposal? Well, what we want to do is we want to make it as easy as possible for anyone to create a proposal. The way that we do that is through proposal automation. We're going to focus on proposal automation. Okay. And then you'll strategically develop the system and you're essentially going to play whack-a-mole, but you're going to actually know which mole to whack at instead of you just blindly whacking things and saying, hey, there's a new feature that came out. So I'm going to whack this. You only want to develop what makes sense. And what makes sense is the preferable problem principle, which I described earlier, and also seeing your process and fixing your process and using data to back it up. That way you're not blindly developing the system, spending tons of money doing things that don't work. And then you're angry and upset because you're like, that didn't have the effect that I wanted it to have. I could also go into the effort impact matrix, but I'm sure you can, you can just find that online. There's, there's some better explanations, but, uh, or more in-depth explanations, but I'll give you my analysis and my quick, uh, take on the effort impact matrix. Essentially, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to order all the things that you can do in Zoho. So the first thing I showed you, you use this report, right? That's the first aspect. You look at things from left to right. The second aspect that's important to know is effort impact matrix. So the first thing that you do is you just list out from top to bottom, the most impactful things that you can do. And then you'll take that list. You can add sticky notes. You can use Miro. You can use a whiteboard. And then you sort the Y axis from top to bottom in terms of most impactful, least impactful. And then you start to organize them from left to right, one at a time, top to bottom, in terms of how much effort it's going to take for you to accomplish something. The top two quadrants, the top left one, will represent easy wins, right? Low effort, high impact. The right quadrant will represent high impact, high effort, which will be a long-term project. So those two quadrants, as many as you have there, those will be your starting items. Get those quick wins in, and then you can move over to longer-term projects if you need to. And then you have your lower two, which you can worry about, but the bottom right one, you don't worry about at all. The bottom left one, 
um, the effort impact matrix would essentially be your backlog. Okay, so those are two levers that you can pull to better strategically detail, do detailed development. You're always going to be adding fields. You're always going to be adding automations. There's always going to be things to build out. That's okay. That's just the nature of systems. Don't get upset by that. It's Kaizen continuous improvement. Okay, so that is the strategy there. The rest of this video has been about the outline of the system. This section has been how to strategically detail, do detailed development, or you'd call it, there's the implementation, which I described, and then there's the improvement side, which I'm talking about now. If you haven't already, make sure to get Z training. It's my free training where I've condensed over 100 implementations worth of knowledge into a single training program for your entire team to get trained up to become power users inside of Zoho. Go ahead and jump over to drewbrockbank.com. Go to the Z training section, and then you can get it for free. You don't have to pay for it. You can get it for free. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.